day number three of the six invitational 2022 group stage the teams that will not be playing today are empire space station dark zero and navi the first game we're going to talk about is sandbox versus the sonics Sandbox versus Sonics, another pretty close community poll, 44% for Sandbox, 56% for Sonics, and I guess the majority of the voters were correct. Sonics end up taking it 2-0. For some reason, they keep putting the Sonics games first, so they just don't want the NA fans to watch them because, I mean, come on, 4 a.m., 1 a.m., that's a, it's a bit outlandish. Okay, All right, what happened in the game? Absolute destruction by the Sonics. 7-0 and 7-3 so of course if we look here we're not going to see any sandbox wins because they did not get any round wins and then once we go over to villa we see a sandbox win sonics win sandbox sonic sandbox and then we see sonics running up one two three four five in a row to close out the second map seven three so we see a seven round win streak on oregon and we see a five round win streak on villa the match overall might have been a little bit closer if Sonics had started on attack rather than defense on Oregon. I'm sure they still would have won, but maybe Sandbox would have actually gotten a few rounds if, if you know, they started on the defensive side. They only had the chance to defend one single time and they lost, so you know, maybe given more chance to defend on Oregon, a one of the more defender-sided maps, then maybe they would have actually got some points on the board, but not the case. So finally, was that the is that the first 7-0? I think uh, I think it is, right? We've seen a few 7-1s, and now we've seen a 7-0. And uh, well, and again, that 7 0 and that five round win streak on Villa are pretty impressive coupled together. Sandbox seemed to be on the decline. They they won against Ninjas in Pajamas on that first day, and then they lost against Eminem on the next day, and now they lost to Sonic. So they have a 2 1 win, giving them two points, and then they have two 2 0 losses, giving them no additional points. So only two points to their name right now, and they only have three more points that they could potentially get. So uh, not looking too good for Sandbox at the moment, and pretty, looking pretty good for Sonic. They have, what, four points? Uh, so three points here, and they got one point in their match against Empire, and then they still have six points on the board because they haven't played in Ninjas and Pajamas or Eminem. So, right, Sonics have potential, I guess, still to top their group, but pretty good potential to just, well, to make it out of their group, but also just to place highly first, second, third, whatever it is. So we'll see what happens with that. And then let's just take a quick look at the stats. Grixer went monstrous once again. Rexon is joining him pretty closely up here. 22 and eight for Grixer, 19 and seven for Rexon. And this is how you know that you really smash your opponent when you're when the bottom rated player on your team or your support player or whatever it is, when they have the stats that look like they played only one map, but you actually played more than that. Like six and seven, that could have just been done in one map, but it was actually done in two maps over the course of 17 rounds. And again, that's just, and also, you know, how else do you know? Because all your teammates are, are green in rating. But yeah, I always think that's just kind of funny whenever that happens. And we see just a ton of red over here. Nova and MB Taylor getting especially smashed. And yeah, Nova, I mean, almost going quadruple negative. That's tough. Uh, Shyel and Static kind of held their own. And Shyel, really, really impressive 5 0 on entry, but, you know, not nearly enough to stop his team from getting run over in one of the biggest savagings we've seen thus far in the group stage. And so let's move on to the next game. So somehow 73% of voters thought that Ninja Pajamas were going to be Eminem Gaming. And well, they got it correct, but it seems like a strange prediction to make based on the way that things have gone. Ninja and Pajamas were 0-2 going into this and Eminem were 1-0. And, and Eminem's one win was over one of the teams that beat Ninja and Pajamas. And it was over the team that, uh, well, Maybe it would have been better if Eminem had, say, beaten Empire, which is the team that absolutely destroyed Ninjas and Pajamas. They, Eminem beat Sandbox, which is the team that Eminem, or sorry, that uh, Ninjas and Pajamas was pretty close with. So, you know, maybe it could have even been a little bit harsher. But, right, again, 0-2 coming into this, 1-0 coming into this, and that's, of, of course, ignoring pedigree and whatnot. But just looking at the tournament, Eminem was up and Ninjas and Pajamas were down, but now we see a little bit of evening out because Ninja Pajamas take down Eminem 2-0 fashion 7-4 7-3 so not exactly close this is uh you know maybe right below that line of of actually being close it, it this is the kind of score that's like close to being close right you know if, if it was like a 7-5 and then a 7-5 or 7-4 or something you'd like maybe you'd call it close or if, or if like one of these again overtime whatever it is a uh, pretty decisive win by Ninja Pajamas and this is the sort of bounce back that they need to get back into form get back into uh, winning shape and whatnot. So this, def this, this definitely puts them in a better position 
at least to make it out of group, but, uh, you know, maybe it'll be... It looks like it's probably Sandbox that's going to be eliminated, and since they organize these games so nicely that they do the, uh, the, the two games from each group in tandem, I'll, uh, I'll show after I cover each set of... Each set of games, I'll show the standings for the group, so right after this, I'll show the standings for group A. Right, let's just look at the stats. Everyone going negative here, and almost everybody going positive here. Uh, Kamikaze down at the bottom, you know, Habana smoke player, it is what it is. Pino popping off over a 2 KD, 2 entry, 2.0 entry ratio, really high cost, KPR survival rate, really good across the board. And we see um, Nello, I mean, their, their support player doing the best which is really never a good sign um you know you know your team got absolutely tossed if well i guess if everyone has really bad stats but then also if on top of it your support player was the the highest statted player usually you know tyrant uses and solotov are just going off but they could not do it against the ninjas so something about how these teams play styles matched up or maybe it was the fact that ninjas have finally woken up in the tournament whatever it was and all right, we're gonna move over to the Liquipedia page that shows the standings, but bear in mind that this is about to be a bright screen, right? This screen's really dark and the next one's like white. So avert your eyes if you must. All right, at the end of day number three, three out of five, keep in mind. So each team in the group has to play either one or two more games still. These are the standings for group A, which are which is the group of the, the matches that I just covered. So Empire remains on top and they've only played two matches, so they are definitely in the best position. If any of these names were uh, highlighted, that means they were locked into a certain thing, but none of them are highlighted. Like if it's highlighted blue, they're guaranteed first place in the group. If it's highlighted red, they're guaranteed to go out of the group, but we don't have any guarantees just yet. So I guess in theory, Empire can still even get eliminated, but it's uh, pretty likely they make it. Pretty likely Sandbox leaves um eminem being the closest to sandbox is all right for eminem because uh, eminem has the head-to-head -head over sandbox and uh well sandbox has the head-to-head -head over ninjas and pajamas so if i mean you know say ninjas do bad in their last match and sandbox does well then maybe sandbox can leapfrog leap leapfrog ninjas but uh definitely the two best in the two teams in the best position are empire and sonic seeing as though they're on top of the group and they each have two games left to play, and then Eminem, uh, you know, is also has two games left to play, so I'd put them probably even a better, in a better position than Ninjas, but that's a little bit tough to say because they are one point behind Ninjas, and they uh, have the losing head-to-head -head against Ninjas and Pajamas, so, right, these are the scores that we've seen, if you're, if you're curious, if you can't remember or whatever, for the matchups, and this will also tell you the, the matchups coming up if you're curious about that as well and right so let's go back to cgg to continue looking at the other matches damon kia versus oxygen maybe not before the tournament you would say that this was a really exciting looking match but certainly given how these teams how these two teams have performed thus far in the tournament it was a really exciting looking matchup damon kia being 2-0 uh, both of those wins as well being 2-0s and then Oxygen being 1-0 thus far with their one win being an absolute destruction of Na'Vi. So 73% of voters thought Damon Kia were going to take it and they were correct. It ends up being a 2-0 in favor of Damon. Let's see how it actually went down. 8-6 win on Villa and then a 7-3 on Oregon. What's interesting here is this is actually exactly the same as how Liquid beat Space Station. Same scores and same maps even Villa and then Oregon. So... I don't know, maybe this is telling, maybe this is the prophecy foretold, maybe we will see the Liquid versus Damon Kia in the Grand Final if they are beating the two seemingly strongest, well, I don't know, maybe they're not the strongest, all the NA teams except for Dark Zero have done pretty well thus far, so, but beating two pretty strong NA teams identically, same round count, same map order, same maps, all this stuff, kind of crazy, maybe it's fate, Oxygen runs it up in the first three rounds on defense on Villa, so it's looking like maybe Oxygen is going to prove that they are the strongest team in the group and they just haven't had as much playtime yet as Damon Kia. They're gonna prove that, again, maybe Damon Kia is a strong team, but Oxygen is stronger, but Damon answers back with one round, two round, and then Oxygen gets one round back of their own, making it a 4-2 half on Villa, pretty standard, but then Oxygen gets another round and then another round. They go to match point already. They're up 6-2 on Villa. They just need to take one more attack but they cannot do it. Damwon wins four in a row to go to overtime, and then they win two more. These guys won the four rounds that they took, that they were required to go to overtime, and then they won two in overtime to win it without even going to round 15. So 
absolute savage six rounds in a row and this seems to really have broken the back of oxygen they just needed one more round for well for four rounds i mean if they had won in round 9 10 11 12 and then uh and then it even reset they could have still won in overtime but i uh, know they couldn't because damon kia could not be stopped so then we go over to oregon and uh, we see Damon Kia, auction, auction, and then Damon Kia runs it up. Once again, we see four, five in a row from them. Finally, auction stops the bleeding, but in round 10, Damon Kia closes it out 7 3. So, a bit of a heartbreaker for auction. They got off to a really, really strong start uh, in the first three rounds and then even in the first eight rounds of Villa. So, it, it looked like it should have been their map to take. They should have secured themselves at least that one point. And then, even if Oregon had gone the same way, they could have gone to map three and still had their shot at beating Damon. But, I mean, I don't know what happened. Oregon is even a strong map for Oxygen, so they probably would have been... They would have felt really good if they had won in... Uh, if they had won 7-2 on Villa, and then they went into Oregon, one of their better maps, if not their best map. Uh, yeah, they would have been feeling hot, but now they got to be feeling a bit low. Can't feel too bad, though, because at the moment, it looks like Damon Kia is the best team in the tournament. Uh, it's a little bit tough to say, because you have to also take into consideration the the quality of opponents, the strength of the group overall and whatnot, so it could still maybe be liquid, but uh, Damon Kia, I think, has knocked Auction out of the running for absolute best-looking team in the tournament. And if we look at the stats down here, we have Woogie Man MVP again. I think he's been top of his team in all three of the games, at least two, if not all three. And then we see Kat Sang, so good to see uh, more names up here. I think we've we've seen all of the players do pretty well thus far, except for Yes. I don't think Yes has had a good game yet. He's done like okay in some of the games, but oh well. I mean, he's he's a standout player in the past, and so let's give the other players time to shine. It's usually him or uh, Rin that are the two really big standouts, but so good for Woogie Man, Kat Sang, and uh, Coded not so much in this game, but one or two of the other games he did pretty well. And then we see Yaga eating up, but uh, Laxing, Fox Egg doing okay, Kino and Vertically doing kind of poorly. And it, it seems like there should maybe even be more of a disparity in terms of the stats, considering the margin that Damon Kia won by. They won by, of course, you know, two rounds in the first map and four rounds in the second map. But I guess maybe some of the auction wins, a lot of them were pretty decisive and some of the Damon round wins were pretty close. Could be the case. I'm, I don't quite remember. And all right, let's continue on. Team 1 versus MIBR. This is one of the more polarized polls that we've seen thus far. Not the most extreme, but certainly one of the most extreme. And people got it wrong. 16% only thought MIBR would win, and MIBR actually end up winning 2-0. So this is a matchup that has a decent amount of history because the teams come from the same region. Not that much history because before, about a year ago, uh, LATAM, the teams looked really, really different because a bunch of players and rosters all switched around all this crazy stuff but in the time that uh, team one and mibr have been the current rosters they've played you know at least what the three times throughout the the three stages if not in if not additional times in the uh, copa elite six which i'm not not 100 sure if they have or not but right they do come from the same region so they should they'll have played each other and they should be familiar with each other's play styles things like this and mibr surprised so coming in as perhaps the supposed weakest LATAM team, considering they had to come from the close qualifier, Team 1 being the highest point earners throughout the year, uh, the SI points. And it was, you know, it's fairly close. Two max regulation games, but MIBR won it 2-0, and they didn't even have to go to overtime, so good on them there. They run it up a little bit on attack on Cafe. That's a bit abnormal, but, well, I'm, I'm saying it enough in these videos, right, for it to be argued is it really abnormal attackers are pretty strong these days at least compared to defenders and well you know obviously what else are you going to compare it to so moving on from there team one actually answers back with three of their own so a three three half with two three round win streaks one for each team and then we see two for mibr mibr mib or uh, sorry team one mibr team one mibr so uh, MIBR takes a little bit of a lead in the second half and then they trade rounds which ends up with MIBR on top so a bit of a shocker and a big shakeup. I think team one at this point is fairly likely to be the one eliminated from their group and if not that then also fairly likely to be the one being seeded straight into the loser bracket by getting fourth place in the group. All right let's look at the stats. Finally Alamout is not on top but it is Lagonis. Uh, you don't really like to see your support player on top like it, it maybe you see it sometimes but the way the games play out it, it just shouldn't happen really your support player shouldn't be in a position to go this crazy i mean he he went the most positive on kd which of course only plus two same as alamau 
and he still got four plants down and he still got a clutch so uh, Lagonis has his struggles in some games, but not in this one, but I mean, well, wasn't enough to get his team across the line, unfortunately. The rest of them couldn't step up, and that's been Team 1's issue, one of their issues, that a lot of their games, a few of their players just don't step up enough. It's just, you know, one, two, maybe three other players are really stepping up. Sometimes three is enough, but uh, if the fourth and fifth player are really struggling, sometimes it's not enough, so unfortunate. And then we see Lucid doing the best on... Uh, on MIBR down here and then nobody else doing extremely well but doing well enough to win it and Lucid and Oligonis actually having identical ratings kind of cool to see and right let's check out the standings for group D after having seen the results of these matches and, and well warning white screen once again all right here we are with the standings for group D and as I said Damwon Kia secured first place in the group so I guess green is second or third place even though that is a little bit different. Uh, it is better to get second than third because you get the whole choice of your opponent thing if you get second place versus third, but you still get seated into the same round of the upper bracket, so it's not that big of a difference. And I'll, I'll just remind you really quickly. Fifth place eliminated, fourth place straight to the loser's bracket, second and third place seated into the first round of the upper bracket, and first place seated into the second round of the upper bracket, so, and then awaiting the victor of a second and third place seed, um, you know, depending on from which group and whatever. However, the bracket ends up, we'll have to see. Right, so best record out of anybody at the end of the day, and well, maybe that's a little bit of a spoiler for how some of the other matches are gonna go. There's there's one team that's still sort of on Damwon's trail, on, on their tail or whatever in another group, but in terms of this group, it's not even close. Uh, right, six whole points ahead of the other two, the next two teams, and having the head-to-head -head over them secures them as uh, first place, right? So Auction and MIBR are both on three points, and these two have not played each other, right? Auction played Na'Vi, and they played Damwon, and MIBR played Team 1 and Damwon. So uh, MIBR may be in a slightly better position. Auction has the better round count, but if we're still assuming Na'Vi is the weakest team in the group, then Auction having already played them and MIBR having not played them has to give MIBR an advantage. So we'll see how things pan out. It's still possible that uh, Team 1 gets knocked out, or really that MIBR or Auction gets knocked out as well. Um, team 1 possibly in the worst position in the group because they're only one point ahead of Na'Vi, but Na'Vi has a whole other game to play. As you can see, um, Dam 1 and Team 1 are the two teams in this group that have already played three, and the other three have only played two. So still, six points potential on the table for Auction and MIBR and Na'Vi. So we'll have to see what happens. And let's move on to the next game. Furia versus Elevate. This is a matchup from Group C, and about two thirds of voters thought that Furia was going to take it. Uh, I could believe it. Both of them have had their ups and downs thus far in the groups, and well, actually, not not strictly true. Elevate is on is on one win and no losses. They had their bye yesterday, and Furia beat BDS and they lost to TSM. Right, so they're one and one. I'd still probably say I'd expect Fury to do better. D it's not so much that Elevate looked amazing against DZ, it's that DZ looked pretty bad. And Furia took down BDS not that easily because the first map did go to overtime, but they did 2-0 them, but you also have to take into consideration the fact that they're playing with the coach, so uh, I don't know, it's a, it's a bit of a wash and tough to call, but just based on history, international success, uh, Furia has had some amount and Elevate has been just absent from international play so i'd probably still give the edge to elevate or sorry to furia here and it it, it is true furia ends up 2 owing what happens 7-2 on bank pretty decisive so maybe furia is just really good on bank i was trying to reconcile the fact that bds went all 15 rounds against or was it 14 rounds? they went to overtime versus furia on oregon but they got 7-1 on bank i thought bds was pretty good on bank but you also i don't know playing with the coach it's a whole different team but maybe furia is just really good on bank and that's why it was such a destruction, and and I actually don't remember if they started on attack or defense on the um, on the BDS game. If they started on attack, maybe that scoreline makes more sense. Oregon just has a tendency to go to a lot of rounds, and bank, we've seen a lot of uh, actually absolute smackdowns on it, so uh, when teams start on attack, that happens sometimes. Right, 7-2, so um, not nothing crazy here. It's going to be, uh, start at the beginning, it's going to be uh, Elevate gets a win, but then Furia runs up three wins, and Elevate gets a win, and then Furia runs up runs up four wins so just a quick 7-2 game and then on this one uh, it's a little bit 
it's a little bit cool to look at. We see two Furio wins, two Elevate wins, but then we see four Furio wins, but then Elevate battles it back. We see four Elevate wins, but then we go to overtime and Furio just takes two. So teams only ever won rounds back to back in counts of two or four. No singles, no threes, none of that. So just two and two and four and four and two, right? So that's how that map went and that's how that match went. A whole 2-0 for Furia, definitely what they were looking for. And let's look at the stats here, right? Uh, a lot of red for Elevate, a lot of green for Furia, a little bit of yellow for each of them. Fantasy on the bottom of the board for Furia. Don't see that too often, but well, I mean, if you're going to underperform, at least do it in a game where you end up winning anyways, then it doesn't come back to haunt you, right? Uh, Lenda on top of the team, and we see DCH on top of the team for Elevate. I don't think anything too crazy to look at here. Um, yeah, nothing uh, nothing that I really see. 87% cost is super solid. And right, let's move on to the other game from this group. BDS versus TSM. So if you didn't know anything about this going into this event, this, is, this has to be one of the matchups you'd be the most excited for. These are just two of the big names in Siege. BDS, pretty well the kings of Europe at this point, at least uh, regionally, just undisputed. And then internationally, you know, it's them and Empire. And then TSM just... Are they the biggest organ siege? And then just one of the absolute powerhouses of NA for quite a long time. Had their struggles a little bit recently, but they seem to be back in good form. And well, BDS has been playing with a coach. Rafal was out of the tournament, and I said he was completely out of the tournament because that was my understanding on the matter, but he's back now. They resolved whatever the issue was, and we still at, at this point don't know what it was. So a lot of people thought this was going to be a really good match, and... And you might think that, oh, BDS back at full strength, but you have to take into consideration the fact that, I mean, it's entirely possible they weren't even scrimming with Rafal. They thought he wasn't going to come back, so they were just scrimming with Bios, their coach. And uh, so just all this weird chemistry stuff, and they're out of practice by at least some amount. I mean, they said, uh, remember I, I referenced in the other video, that the coach thought that they were in really, really good form, but and it just takes a little bit of an issue for all that to fall apart. They were playing all these high ten high intensity matches with their coach and okay right that's that's enough on the subject so bds maybe at full power they have their full roster but maybe not actually a full power so tsm coming in come in looking pretty big pretty good rather and they have a a good chunk of this community prediction in their favor but bds now with a uh, a good chunk in their favor and i imagine this poll was also done thinking that the coach would still be playing. So maybe that would have skewed it one way or the other. Hard to say, but TSM looked pretty good coming into this. So 7-1 on Bank, 7-5 on Oregon. TSM cleans it up 2-0, no overtime or anything. And another destruction of BDS on Bank, another 7-1. This is the same thing that Furia did to BDS, and that, that was with the coach. And now TSM did this to them without the coach. So, I mean, is BDS just really bad on Bank now? TSM is really good on Bank from what we've seen. Uh, when they played in the qual, they were quite excellent in... Uh, the one time I think they only played it one time in the uh, in stage three, but they was that a 7 0? Did they 7 0 on it? They might have, right? And then we go to Oregon, which they goes to max regulation, but still, oh, actually, let's look at this one first. Still a pretty uh, handy victory for TSM. So, had this gone before I look at this, but had this gone differently for, for BDS if they had done better, maybe TSM was just the superior team, but maybe it was some of those things coming into effect for BDS too not be playing at their full potential but i would have sucked for tsm because two other, two of the teams got to play against bds with the coach one of them being dark zero which if bds didn't play with the coach like dark zero had to get destroyed right with the way that that series went and the way that dark zero had been playing and then furia i mean who's to say usually bds beats them so you you'd have to think that they beat them so maybe tsm was going to beat them anyways so that like this is just so unfortunate for bds you you would you really would have liked to have that profile in against those players and maybe you just take the l versus tsm because maybe you're you were the most likely to take it anyway so just uh, not not only is is the thing not only does the thing suck a lot just to start with but also the way that things lined up for them made it even worse so right let's look at the how the rounds progressed uh, TSM, 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 TSM. So a flawless attacking hat. TSM are really good at attacking bank. And then we get one for BDS. So, you know, there's this small glimmer of hope that maybe they'll uh, maybe not run it all the way back. Six in a row is pretty difficult to do, even though TSM just did it. But uh, maybe they'll 
they'll get heated up they'll win enough rounds on here to carry momentum into the second and potentially third map but it's not the case um you know they get 1v1 clutched on by merc but merc was whipping a lot of shots it, it was looking kind of dangerous for him for a second he had the jump but he ends up winning it winning it in the end anyways so 7-1 there and then if we go to oregon we see TSM run up a three in a row, and then BDS answers back. TSM, BDS, so a 4-2 on Oregon, pretty standard. And then TSM gets one, and then two from BDS, one from TSM, one from BDS, one from TSM. Closing out the map, 7-5, that's all it takes. Just got to be a little bit better on one of the sides. Looking at the stats here, Three Day continues to be on the top. Has he been? Uh, he might be, have been on the top for BDS every game, but at least two of the games, right? If not all three. And then Merc, really good. Bolo, really good. Achieve, really good. Yeah, everyone really does really well, except for Chala, sort of suffered in this one. But oh well, it is what it is. And so now let's check out the standings on a very bright white screen for Group C. Here we have the standings. So TSM and Fury have this greenish background or yellowish or whatever you want to call it. I think that means that they're secured to make it out of the group. So they're not guaranteed to be in any certain position, but neither of them can get eliminated from the tournament anymore. So it's going to be Elevate or Dark Zero or BDS. BDS certainly in the worst position considering they are at the bottom of the board and they've played the most games of anyone down here. So Elevate still has two games to play. Dark Zero still has two games to play. BDS has only one game to play. And they have the losing head-to-head -head against Dark Zero, and it's Elevate that they still need to play against. So they really need to do well against Elevate. And and I think is the only way that they're getting. Oh, I guess there's multiple ways that they get out. If they if they get a win versus Elevate, and Dark Zero gets no more points, they can pass Dark Zero. Or if uh, BDS gets a 2-0 win versus Elevate, and Dark Zero gets no more than one point there's a few different ways it seems most likely it's gonna be bds gone which is a shame it would be cool to see them uh, i mean win solidly against elevate and then either elevate or dark zero gets eliminated because that's probably more deserving to happen and probably dark zero at this point is the most deserving to be eliminated because i still think that given that they now have their full roster it's entirely possible for bds to make quite a deep bracket run and it would be a shame for us to not get to not get to see it and it'd be super cool even if they could make it all the way to third place, meaning that they don't start in the loser bracket, but uh, that's tricky. They have to pass, of course, both both Elevate and Dark Zero, which is, I, which is possible, I guess, right? Because Elevate and Dark Zero have already played each other, but uh, is it probable? I don't know. And right, let's move on to the last set of games for the day. Rogue versus FaZe Clan. The community was massively in FaZe's corner when it came to this matchup, and it makes sense. Rogue, I'm, as I've said a million times, really hot and cold team, and FaZe, the current reigning major champion. And so this was Rogue's chance to prove that, well, they did lose to Liquid, right? But this was their chance to prove that Liquid is just the best team in the group, and Rogue is still a solid team. And, I mean, I this technically doesn't disprove that they're a solid team, but uh, this, this hurts their chances quite a lot to place highly in the group, and so to get a good a good seating in the bracket. Right, so what happened? A 7-3, seven, 7-4. Seven, so Rogue, 7-4, seven, 7-4 four, seven, four lost to Liquid, and they 7-4, seven, 7-4 four, seven, four beat Cyclops. So almost another 7-4, seven, 7-4. Seven, but these guys, for some reason, can't uh, deviate from playing 10 or 11 rounds. And only one map they deviated from playing 11 rounds. So that's just kind of funny. Okay, so looking at this. Oh, no, we'll, uh, we'll look through this really quickly. Anything anything crazy here. A lot of phase. Uh, phase early on and this is on the defensive villa so you know nothing too nothing too insane rogue keeping it a little bit competitive they got their two attack wins but then they just couldn't really uh stay on they couldn't defend very well right they they got the one win and then phase strung together three to close out the map seven three and then when we go to chalet generally more of an attacker sided map i think it's right around 50 50 for the event thus far so phase 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 on attack running it up rogue phase rogue so that's that's fairly standard for uh chalet as well for the attacking side to get for the round so rogue still in it but then phase clan wins this round and this round putting them on match point already rogue wins a couple rounds to keep themselves alive but in round 11 phase clan closes it out on the wine cellar the uh, that's tough that's tough you hate to lose there i think that actually has the highest win percentage of any of the sites and i think we'll look at those at the end along with the along with the player stats but First, let's look at the stats for this match. Astro going crazy with a 2.0 KD. Bullet, Cyber, Souls all putting up good numbers. Cameraman about even in terms of KD. 
Just uh, his entry stats hurt him on terms of, in terms of rating, it looks like. And then on the side of Rogue, a little bit positive for Leon. So I think he was the top rated player in their previous game. And so here he is again. Rips suffering again, though. He was, I think, the, the only not highly rated player in their last game. And here he is, bottom of the board once again. And, I mean, he doesn't have too many excuses. He's on the Zofia Aruni, so it's not like uh, he's Prano over here on the, the Hard Breach Smoker or anything. But, uh, right, so that's what happened here. And now let's move on to the last game of the day. The absolute banger. Team Liquid versus Cyclops. Team Liquid getting 85% of the community vote, just like FaZe got 85% of the community vote in their game. So a little bit of a parallel going on there. I think the way that this group has gone, it's really building up for the Liquid versus FaZe showdown. 2-1 victory for Liquid, and this was really, really close to being a 2-0 win for Cyclops, and that would have been big. I saw an interview with one of the players, it was, be show it was being shown on the, on the stream, and they were talking about how they thought that they had the best matchup in their group against Liquid and against SSG. So that is to say they thought they had a better matchup against those two than against Rogue and FaZe. They've yet to play FaZe, right? And they lost to Rogue, so it sort of sort of made sense what they were saying. It looked like they were about to beat Liquid. These guys are they're so fun to watch. You gotta check out this match. This is along with so far along with the FaZe SSG match, I think the uh you know the top two. The top two games from the group stage thus far. So two more days to go. We'll see how we'll see what happens. We've seen a few good games, but this was one especially stood out, and especially for the the wild Cyclops playstyle. Eight to seven, Cyclops win on Cafe. So they were going crazy. They won three in a row, but then Liquid wins two. Cyclops wins one for the standard four-two split, and then we see Liquid, Liquid. So they bring it back to a four-four. Cyclops, Cyclops. They get to match point after round ten. They just need one of these two next rounds to win in regulation. They don't do it. Liquid wins these two, and then we go to overtime. Cyclops wins a wins another round off of this black ray 4k disables the diffuser pretty crazy round uh and then again they just need to win one more round of the next two and they don't win the next one but finally round 15 they win it another clutch okay so this kind of went either way it looked like it was slipping away from cyclops but liquid uh they couldn't close it out so cyclops end up winning this map and then we're going to map number two we're going to bank all right so this one oh man such a heartbreaker Cyclops, Liquid, Cyclops, Liquid, Cyclops, Liquid, Cyclops, Cyclops, Cyclops. Man, they're running it up. Okay, so they're on match point. Now they have three chances. Liquid has to win three rounds in a row just to go to overtime, just to not get 2 0 in this series. But what do they do? They do exactly that. Liquid, 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 Liquid. Five in a row. Three of them to push overtime, and then two of them to secure the win in overtime. And an overtime win is just as good as a non-overtime win in this format. So... Man, that's just, that was so tough to watch. Just, just to watch it slip out of their hands. They almost had that 2-0. And there would have been this really cool loop. Maybe this is the sort of thing that's present in other, in other groups, but I hadn't really thought about it. But if Cyclops had won here, then it'd be Cyclops beat Liquid. Liquid beat SSG. SSG beat FaZe. And FaZe beat Rogue. And Rogue beat Cyclops. And all of them had, a, of course, if... if a, Cyclops had one on the second map. They would have all been 2-0s, except for, I think, the SSG win over FaZe. And so, Rogues went... Yeah, I, I, I think they would have all been 2-0s, except for that one. So, it would have been this cool little cool little loop, but not the case, because we go to Villa, and it's just a 7-3. Sort of a boring way to finish things out. I guess, maybe Liquid's just that much better than Cyclops on Villa. I don't... It didn't look like they're that good on this map. You can't do as crazy of stuff on Villa as you can on Bank, especially Bank, and then uh, as you can on even Cafe. And so maybe maybe Liquid was just that much better than Cyclops. Maybe Cyclops was running out of steam. Maybe Liquid was figuring them out. Whatever it was, uh, just Liquid stood stalwart in the end. And just none of these teams in the group, they just don't have the grit to beat Liquid. They're just, oh man, they're just so good. They're they're so tough to take down. And, and man, was Cyclops close. They just couldn't get there. Are we on, we're on Villa. Okay. Liquid, Cyclops, Liquid, 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 Cyclops, Liquid, Cyclops, Liquid. So a little bit of a streak here in the middle. And then other than that, they just traded favorably. But four in a row, nothing to, uh, nothing to sneeze at. And then if we look at the stats here, Black Ray went pretty crazy. Iagator had, there was like one one round where I, I especially, he made some crazy flick and yeah, this guy's going insane. These guys run a lot of LMGs and so does everybody, but they had, there was one round on bank where they had three LMGs. Uh, most teams will have like two. I think they had, there's like Zofia, Captow, and Finca or something like that. 
and uh, yeah, just we are full force in the frag LMG meta, and people are really going off about it on Twitter, talking about changes to frags and LMGs and yellow pings and all this stuff. Right, so we see the Nesk Palu duo remain strong once again. I think in the previous series, I didn't mention this, Palu went plus 1000 lifetime on kills. First player to do it, only player to have done it. I think Nesk is not that far behind him, but a decent way behind him. And so uh, Palu going crazy. Nesk going a little bit more crazy in this particular series though. PSK finally has a pretty good series of its own and then asking resets just below the 1.0 at the 0 0.97. A lot of red over here on Cyclops. Less than a 0.5 KD on Gatorada. And yeah, just heartbreaker for Cyclops. Heartbreaker of a match to watch. I was really rooting for Cyclops because uh, of course you didn't want to you didn't want these guys to come in and get popped. They lose to rogues, so you're thinking, oh, maybe these guys are just bad. If they're already losing to rogue, surely they're gonna lose to SSG and Liquid and FaZe, but they almost beat Liquid. So I'm excited to see the Cyclops game versus the other ones. I, of course I can't root against I can't root for them against SSG, but I sure can against FaZe, so. We'll see how that progresses, and let's take a look at the bright white standings for this group, Group B. For the final time, for the final group of the day, here we are looking at the standings, and still we'll look at uh, just a few player stats and the map stats after this as well. If you're curious, stay tuned. So we have Liquid secured into, I guess, third place or better, so they are secured to be seeded into the upper bracket, not 100% guaranteed to make it as first seed just yet, but quite close. So they are currently the only other team that is anywhere near Damwon Key in terms of points. They're on 8, Damwon is on 9. The next closest is what, like 6? 5? Well, I guess I can just check. But we see 5 for Empire, 6 for TSM and Furia, and yeah, that's the only other teams that are even close. So TSM, as of now, are the only other team besides Damwon that haven't dropped a map, and TSM, Liquid, and Damwon are the only teams haven't dropped a series no wait empire as well hasn't dropped a hasn't dropped a series so four teams haven't dropped a series two teams haven't dropped a map and where were we group b okay so liquid has already played three games and so has rogue and uh so phase clan space station and cyclops still have the potential each for six points space station and cyclops their game which is on yeah it's actually tomorrow this is going to be a really important game if Cyclops can win it, uh, that'll be massive for them. If Space Station can win it, they are pretty safe. If they win it, if they win it two to one in terms of maps, then I guess they're not they're not guaranteed to be above Cyclops. But if they win it two zero, oh, they're guaranteed to, to be above them in the standings, and they'll be secured for uh, to at least to make it out of groups, right? And then so. I still think that the games played within this group are going to be quite exciting and they mean quite a lot except for the liquid one they definitely still want to win they want to secure their first place seed but uh, you know they can't get knocked out or anything so it doesn't mean as much to them perhaps as it does to the other teams and right i guess that does it for this and let's go back to the player stats all right here are the player stats leaderboards we have grixer on top of the rating this was fox a before but uh, his his devastating loss to Damwon Kia has brought his rating down quite a bit. But Grixer remains on top, even though his team is, what, 1-1. One one. His rating is absolutely insane overall, right? So they still have two more games to play, so he has potential for his rating to go up. That's pretty difficult. He has a lot of potential for it to go down. We'll have to see. And then we have Nesk and Palu, the, the faithful duo up here. Woogie Man, the man who's uh, secured Damwon's dominance thus far. And then Fox A's rating uh, remains pretty high, mostly off the back of his first day performance. And then KD, Nesk, and Palu. And then we see Grixir, Woogie Man, and JR, surprising. He's way up here, despite his team not uh, being so impressive thus far. This, this is especially coming from the first game that they played against Elevate. Everyone on his team didn't do that hot, but he went like plus 16 or something. And then entry, so Nesk way above everyone else. And then Foltz, Grixir, Alamau, Pamzu all on plus 9, all respectable numbers here and then once again Nesk cost highest 82 percent so not only was he going massively positive on kd and entry he was having an impact on the highest number of rounds of any player and then laxing fox a pretty high as well dch um, a little bit of an outlier and then well here's grixer again clutches we see woogie man with the most clutch of anyone bios is a no notable one this was the coach standing up for bds and then we see a, a few coming out from alamau which is I mean, he's not really even a support player for Team 1, right? He's like, he's not, but he also plays the smoke, which is like the support operator on defense. So 
I suppose he'd be in a lot of clutch positions. And then Cat Sang and Prano. And then for plants, we see Damwon's coated on top, Bride, Ask, Super, Skies. So these are some of the guys that generally get a lot of the plants down. So these numbers make a lot of sense. Super was on top, and then he got no plants in this last day. So, you know, he just he didn't fall completely off, but he got his first place spot usurped by a few players. And then let's just look at the full stats really quickly. Grixer, Nesk, Palu, Woogie Man, Foxe, Yaga. So just some of the teams that have done pretty well thus far. And a few standout players, Astro and JIR. And I don't really care to read all these. I'll scroll through this a little bit slowly in case you want to glance at it. And we're getting ooh, the colors decaying. It's turning yellow or whatever. Man, this can take so long. There's a hundred of them. Who's at the bottom? That's what we got to see. No, it is it is what it is. Yeah, there's Rips. He's It's been unfortunate for, for him. And then Gatorada. Um, you know, same same sort of thing. Renchiro's really suffered for whatever reason. More so, you know, his whole team has because of the situation, but him more so statistically than anyone else. Harper, Nathan, I mean, just a lot of support players down here at the bottom. Bosco is usually a pretty highly rated player on land, but unfortunately not for this land, so that's tough to see. And then finally, we have the map and site picks. So uh, let's take a quick look. Let me just look over them. So yeah, everything is within the range of 40% to 55%. So some maps are even pretty heavily attacker favored and none none are crazy defender favored oregon being the most defender favored and uh, then villa cafe right so mining dining have the highest win rate by far for defense on cafe but it also has the fewest uh, plays so you gotta take that into consideration everything else is around 50 percent villa really poor living library win rate that's uh, i guess one out of the eight times it's been played it's been one and then everything else a little bit above 50 so that all evens out, makes sense with the overall win rate. And then, which maps? So I guess they're ordered by the number of plays, so Chalet is the least played. That's a little bit surprising. I feel like a lot of teams like Chalet. I would have thought Bank would have been the least played, but, I, or maybe Coastline as well. People don't really tend to like Coastline these days. But uh, maybe people are warming up to Bank a little bit. They've been hiding it, and they're now pulling it out, whatever it is. And then Clubhouse, the, uh, the classic, is a little bit low as well. So, where was I? Continuing on. Oregon, everything's at least 50% for defenders. So, uh, Meeting Hall Kitchen actually being the highest, but of course, it's a little bit hard to say this is like the best site because these two sites have been played far more, but it looks like Meeting Hall Kitchen is has been the superior site to Kitchen Dining, which I, th I think it is, in my opinion. Some, some teams like to play Kitchen Dining. I think Meeting Hall Kitchen's the better site. And right, moving on to Bank. So, you know, as you play the objective less, the the win rate increases, so it's, uh, of course, skewed down here two out of three times. You know, if this, this could be almost the weakest if it had just been one, one fewer time, so it's hard to really call. But teams tend to be preferring lockers still in terms of number of rounds played along with open area. Um, I thought this might have changed with the restructuring of the map, but uh, I mean, I guess teams still like going down here, even though they're losing it the most. Maybe teams will come around to like CEO or something, but as teams start playing, start defending these other sites more, Teams will also get better at attacking them, so their rates will come down. So it's just this whole whole cycle. And then Clubhouse. This is super surprising. It's the most attacker favored map, and I guess it's just been around long enough without any significant changes to where people have figured it out, and the meta has changed for this to happen, whatever it is. The sites besides the basement are just near undefendable. Like, look at this. Cash CCTV, that's, what, three wins out of 19 or something like that? Is that, uh, that might be right. And then Master Bedroom, 3 out of 15. And Bar Stage, 2 out of 7. Uh, Church Arsenal, really high defensive win rate. It's actually the highest out of all of them, except for, what, just Mining Dining, which is a little bit of an outlier. But, uh, so, yeah, of all of the heavily played sites, it's by far the most defender favorite. So that's interesting to note. I guess just when you can't get fragged through the floor and you also can't be breached above, uh, you, you can, of course, sort of reach above. The basement but only really in the in the kitchen in the hallway over church and uh, over blue and whatnot that you can't do any any top down so i think those are probably big factors that go into that and then coastline really even so 50 percent on all three of these and then blue sunrise just slightly attacker favored so that's a bit strange to note i think uh, it does make sense though coastline was always attacker favored but now with the a little bit of a change to vip the window becoming a wall um, made it more defender favored in theory and also it looks like in practice and then chalet 50 50 50 and then it's just strangely wine cellar snowmobile you know but again it's the uh it's the least played site that has the highest win rate just four out of seven times it's been successfully defended and if this had been played one more time and defended and and also lost this would be a perfect 50 50 on all four sides that would have been cute to see but all right so 
enough about all of that. I guess that's going to do it for the day. Hopefully I'll have the next one of these up in a timely fashion, you know, i.e. about this time tomorrow, but uh, we'll see what actually happens. And all right, with all that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video.